everybody welcome back to uh review and order by critical minds and um today we're gonna do some inaccuracies in svu that we see quite often but i would also like to add that as the seasons go by a lot of these inaccuracies are fixed which i actually thought was really interesting but i'll get into those with each uh inaccuracy <laughs> Alright, for our first inaccuracy, it will be the torn hymen showing that the victim is a virgin. This is not really true. Now, there are certain exceptions to this in the sense that, yes, you can tear your hymen during your first time, but you can also not do that, so that really doesn't prove much. Uh, you can also tear your hymen from riding your bike, from... Doing numerous of things, even washing too hard. I mean, would be that would also be something that you would also want to consider. But it doesn't always indicate first sex. Um, but I can see why they use it in this show, because at the time that the show is coming out, at the time when they start using this whole Torn Hyman thing, uh, rape wasn't necessarily really, I guess, it, no one really believed in it as much as they do now, or at least I hope they do now, a lot of people were just like, oh, you know, women just wanted it, you know, blah, 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 blah. But if a woman was celibate, if she was a virgin, if someone did that, you know, if they were like, oh, I was a virgin, you know, you have more sympathy towards the woman. And I think they did that so that, you know, people can feel bad for her instead of just assuming that she was like a slut or something. Not that sluts are bad, I'm just saying at the time people thought they were and using this whole torn hymen thing was like an, an excuse to make sure that the audience definitely knows that she wasn't having sex and it's irritating but what I do like about this show is that they learn from their lessons and later on through the season they don't use that name not through the seasons but through through all of the seasons they stop using it and I think they kind of caught up with the times and I think that's what makes this show good, is that it has the capacity to change, to move on from that sort of thing. Next up on our list is the classic Zoom and Enhance. Now, this isn't, you know, only to this show. They do this in a lot of other shows. I think most people know it from CSI, but I will tell you the reason why they do this. Back in those days, they did not have HD cameras, and they would like the public to think the police could catch them. I honestly think that's like some sort of weird, can like, they have like some agreement with the police to make the police seem like they know more than they do, so that, you know, people don't get wind of what actually goes on in investigations. That's just my personal thought, but I think that what they did is that they wanted to make it seem like if there's a camera, they definitely catch you. When in actuality, it's more of like a really grainy footage that can catch, that capture like shapes and maybe sometimes color if they have a color CT, but a lot of the times they don't and the most you're going to get is a basic shape, maybe a nose shape, maybe, but a lot of the times it's going to be too grainy for them to know and as the series goes on, you know, more places get HD cameras when they do high-profile cases in, like, hotels and whatever. They have, like, better cameras, which means they can, not necessarily enhance, but they can see more facial features. It's more of a proper ID, if you will. They'll be able to notice who you are. But if it's in, like, one of those common, like, party stores or, like, uh, liquor stores or whatever, you know, they're not really gonna get, like, a good enough footage of your face, you know? It's kind of just going to be like a grainy footage. But, like I said before in the last one, you know, as the series goes on, they use that as sort of like a plot device. As a, oh, we got you on camera, but it's grainy and then they can get away with it, you know. Which I thought was really nice that they were able to do that because then it adds more realism to the story. and makes you actually believe that this is something that could happen. And there's been a lot of cases in later SVU where... They have lost cases because the camera was not a high enough resolution to capture a face, 
and I thought that was really cool. Our next inaccuracy is, uh, I suppose you could say, the objections in court made by the defense attorney and the ADA. And I was reading this article. Uh, who, they were interviewing this lady named Allison Leota. She's basically living my dream. She essentially grew up with law and order and decided to become a, an attorney. And she says, now that when I sit on the couch and I'm trying to relax and watch Law and Order and Law and Order SVU, all she can do is just yell objection all the time. Because apparently a lot of the times, I guess they want to make it more dramatic, make you feel pain for the defendant or something, or make the ADA win the case or something by saying something you're really not allowed to say in court. Like, for all, a lot of the times you you hear the obvious objections when the attorney is like, oh, we, so you were just having sex for fun or something, you know, that's not cause of spe speculation. I want to say that's badgering the witness, I think. No, that might be something else. I'll put a link to the description what I described. But um, a lot of the times you'll have the obvious ones where, you know, they're saying something horrible or they're saying what the lawyer thinks because the lawyer is not allowed to give their own opinion. They're only allowed to ask you questions. And you can ask questions that lead them to answers that you want, but you're not allowed to give your opinion on said questions. And I think a lot of the times in the show, they want, they want it to keep going. You know, they want you to essentially be interested in, in what the witness has to say and in this case you get a lot of inaccuracies as to what actually happens in court because there's a lot less things you can do you know you can't give your opinion in any sense of the word you can't I know you can't specifically say things like so you were here at this time you know, without presenting evidence towards that. I mean, there's a lot of obvious ones out there. I can put a link to the description as well. But uh, there's a lot of things that they let them do in Law & Order that they don't let you do in real life. And it's really only for dramatic reasons. Our next inaccuracy is essentially how... These cops are keeping their jobs, to be honest. Um, a lot of the times throughout the episode, they do something unethical. They arrest somebody using their own words for the Miranda rights, which uh, you can't do that. Um, they essentially stalk people. They slam people against the wall, harass them. There's a lot of problems with a lot of what they do and is bad a lot of the stuff they do is bad you know cops aren't really allowed to do that and um if they are caught and or sued by the person and when they would be fired even if they were considered up for being sued you know even even if the, if they didn't follow through with a lawsuit you know they could still get fired for even doing anything of the sort you know uh I probably uh, refer to you to the blog that's by Allison Leota. Uh, she reviews episodes as well, but she gives her, you know, actual legal opinion. Mine's just from a, from a consumer's, uh, a civilian's sort of point of view is how I review these. But hers is from a legal standpoint, and she could probably give you more information about that. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, and our last inaccuracy is essentially the whole show in itself. The way that the police officers deal with sex crimes. The way that they take them as seriously as they do. Although in the beginning, the way that they talk about it, that's probably more like how people talk, you know, kind of annoying and offensive at times. That's how a lot of people are. But the fact that they take them so seriously isn't really very common, and it's not really a thing. Thing, if you really get what I mean. Um, it doesn't really work that way when it comes to 
schools, when it comes to on campus at colleges or even in the police department itself. A lot of the times they don't take them that seriously. Uh, a lot of the times they, even if they do take it seriously, they they know how much of a pain it is to go through a trial to do all of that. So a lot of the times they're just like, you know, I don't know about this. And I think SVU is kind of like a collection of all the sex crimes in a big gigantic area, bigger than just Manhattan or New York. I think it's a hell of a lot bigger than that. I think all those cases can be summed up in maybe the entire state, maybe two states. I don't think there's that many that go to trial like that in one area. And it's sad, and that's part of the reason why there's so many rape kits that are backlogged. And it always confused me to hear that, you know, all these rape kits are backlogged, but in the show, they're showing you, you know, they get that rape kit back like that, like super fast. And I'm like, okay, but I thought you backlogged them all, <laughs> you know? I thought you had like a problem. But in SVU, I guess they're trying to show you that SVU is the perfect department for sex crimes, you know? And I think what Dick Wolf was trying to do was try to make this show so influential that it would influence people to one, take it more seriously, and two, maybe even influence cops and lawyers and potential jurors to take it more seriously instead of just thinking, oh, well, that girl was just drunk. No, the girl was drunk, the guy was not, you know, she was unable to consent. Even the other way around, which I like about SVU, is every once in a while they have a guy victim. So you know that guys can be victims too. And I think that it is important to highlight all of that. And yes, I know that women have it worse. And yes, that should kind of maybe be the main focal point of the show. But I do think that it is important to also talk about crimes that can happen to men. Because because of that, in the show, they take all their cases seriously. So it was a lot easier to fit male victims in there to get the audience to take it seriously if the cops that are involved are taking it seriously as well. And it's an inaccuracy, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a good thing simply because it can help others see it see it in the same way too. You know what I mean? Well, I guess that's the end of our list for now. I will always update and uh, I'll see you guys on the flippity flips. Alright everybody, thanks for watching and if you have any inaccuracies of your own that I may have missed, please add them in the comments. I might add them in a later video. I would also like sources too. Um, and I will be posting another episode this week. I want to do three a week, but since it's coming closer to the holidays, I might only do two. Um, I'll definitely pick it up when the new year comes around though. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy and see you on the flippity flip.